Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Okay, we're coming back. It's a little after 2 o'clock. I've been answering some questions that people have been adding in the Q&A. If you look at the uh, Q&A, you can see some of the uh, answers there. All right. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to just take a quick look at the uh, Visual VM software. Um, again, I'm going to show you where you can find this on your own computer or where you can uh, download this if you don't have it available in your JDK. And we'll go through some of the different options and different uh, windows that are available. And then we'll put it to use. We'll look at a couple of quick demos so you can see what it would look like inside of a profiler to see a, um, you know, for example, a, a deadlock from threads or an out-of-memory error or things like that. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is uh, share my desktop. Give me just a second. Okay, so where can you find uh, Visual VM? First of all, the first place I want you to look is inside of your JDK. If you have JDK 1.6, you should have a directory like something looks like this. And you would go to your bin directory. And inside of your bin directory, you will see, there it is, jvisualvm.exe. This is the Visual VM all-in-one Java troubleshooting tool. Now, if you don't have it, no need to panic. You can go right to their website, uh, visualvm.dev.java.net. Of course, you can Google that, and you can download the tool right here. Um, in fact, if I click on the download link, What you'll see here is, uh, here's where I'm able to download it. So I've got my Visual VM as a zip file. Simply unzip that. If you want to use it with Eclipse, here's your Eclipse IDE integration. If you want to use it, for example, with NetBeans, their recommendation is to uh, check out the NetBeans profiler. There are different uh, languages uh, for the Visual VM. They have it in English, Japanese, and Chinese. And it is available for the Mac OS X. All right, so let's see, we've got it. Let's uh, double click on it and start it up. All right, so what we have here in our Visual VM is we have, uh, sorry, I'm just gonna get rid of some uh, old stuff here so we can start fresh. Okay, so what you'll see on our two main windows, you have an applications window and a start page. So the start page just comes up as uh, every time you start the app, it's got a nice little menu of here so you can get some more information, look at different guides of how to use it, um, some uh, white papers on just how to troubleshoot Java in general. Um, if you decide that you don't want that startup page to start up, there's a little link down here in the bottom where it says show on startup. So that's not as interesting as what's going on on the left side. So the left side here is our applications. You'll see that we've got three main areas. We have local, remote, and snapshots. Now for the purpose of this demonstration, we're not going to go through the remote, but just keep in mind that the remote is for connecting to any server um, that's not on your local system. So if I have a, a test uh, Tomcat, for example, that's running somewhere, I can still use Java Visual VM um, to connect to that remotely and still do the profiling on this computer. But we're going to be sticking with the local. And so that just simply means we're going to look at JVM processes that are running locally. Right now you can see that there are two processes that have already started. One's an unknown application, and one is Visual VM, which is the software itself. The unknown application I just happen to know is my Eclipse that's running in the background. So what happens is, when I decide that I want to actually start running something, let's uh, start up Tomcat here. All right, looks like that's running. Just double check the console, okay. So now when I go back to Java Visual VM, you'll notice on the left side in the applications that we now have Tomcat listed as one of the options. If I right click on this, you'll see that I have several different things that I can do with Tomcat. First is open, and we'll look at that in more detail in just a minute. Um, so with uh, the open, we're able to uh, do profiling and do snapshots and all of those sorts of stuff. Below that, we have our thread dump and our heap dump. 
Again, our thread dumpster is going to take a snapshot moment in time. It's going to say what threads are currently uh, around and what are the stack traces for each of those threads, what's been called in each of those threads. We can take a heap dump so we can see what objects are in memory. We can do our profiling, or we can do an app application snapshot. An application snapshot is just a quick way to do both a thread dump and a heap dump. Below that, we have enable heap dump on OOME, and that just simply means enable the heap dump, make sure it happens whenever you reach an out of memory error. So I'm going to turn that on. I'm just going to put that on as a short example. I'm going to go back to my code, and I have some simple class here that will create an out of memory error. Um, just to look at the code real briefly, it's all it's doing is uh, creating an array list and adding some integer objects to it until the point of where it runs out of memory. So I'm going to run this. And I'm going to go back, and it should show up here, the out-of-memory generator. I'm going to enable heap dump on OOME, my out-of-memory error. And I'm going to let that sit for a second. And it's slowly going. There we go. It's disappeared. And what you'll see here is that the uh, Visual VM will actually put out messages directly to your, your console. Um, so here it says that I can tell, in fact, I'll make it just a little bit bigger so we can see. We're looking at the bottom of my screen right here. Um, I've got an out of memory error, and the problem there was the Java heap space. It dumps the heap to this particular um, file. Tells me that the file was created, and then of course I get my regular Java stack the issue of what happened if it being out of memory. So I could go through to this URL, which excuse me, to this uh, space. Copy this because I'm much too lazy to type. And if I wanted to take a look at that, I could uh, load. And I want to see a heap dump. There it is. And it's loading the heap dump. Take it just a minute. And I'm going to leave this alone for right now because we're going to come back to heap dumps and take a look at what you can do with them. But all I want to show you right now is that um, we're able to say, hey, let's latch onto this application. If anything goes wrong with it, out of memory, I want you to take a picture, a snapshot at that moment in time, and then I can use it later to evaluate it. The actual evaluation we're going to see in just a minute. So again, we have our processes over on the left side, and we have several different options when I do a right click on that particular option. Let's uh, go through and now open up. I'm going to open up the Tomcat. You'll notice here over on the right side that I'm starting to get different tabs. So I can jump back to the start page or look at that heat dump for here's my Tomcat. Just as a best practice, when you are done with a particular process, it's a good idea to get rid of that tab. Um, what I found is that when I'm starting and stopping lots of different uh, Tomcat processes, I suddenly start to have lots and lots of these Tomcat tabs. It makes it a little bit more difficult to figure out uh, what it was I was just running. So let's take a look at each of these uh, different tabs. It starts with an overview tab. And you just get some information about the process that's running. What process ID is it? What was the uh, main class that started everything up? In this case, of course, it was running Tomcat, so it's the Org Apache Catalina Start boot up, Bootstrap. Any arguments that were submitted? Um, what kind of JVM are you using? You can see here that I'm using the Hotspot Client Virtual Machine because I don't have multiple processors on this uh, particular computer, and it's not, it doesn't have more than two gigabytes of memory, and it's a 32-bit system. So I use the uh, client. It says where my Java home is, different system properties, et cetera, et cetera. Next tab here is the monitor. And we'll look at the CPU a little bit later. Uh, let's focus on these other windows right now. On the right side, what I'm able to see with the monitor is what's going on with my heap. Um, everything that you see in pink is the total heap size that's been allocated. And if you look then at the uh, bluish purple below that, that's how much heap is actually being used. Uh, we can get some more information in different views. But if I put my mouse over this, you'll get a text value of the actual amount of, uh, that's being used for a given heap. There's also a perm gen. 
uh, that we mentioned earlier. Remember, the permanent generation area is where metadata uh, for reflection and whatnot about your classes and methods is stored. Um, so you can start to look there and see if you're having any permanent generation issues. If perhaps you're using up all of your perm gen, that might be information for you like to say, hmm, am I using too many classes? Do I have too many classes being loaded? Um, can I reduce the amount of classes that are being loaded? Or perhaps you can use a Java virtual machine configuration to increase the size of your perm gen space. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.